I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Of course, we want to share a little bit about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, and it's real. Uh, I said in the first service, it's really true. You were not there when Jesus rose. From, you weren't there when he died on the cross. You weren't there, you know, to, to observe his resurrection power. And so, in childlike faith, we believe it. We accept the fact. How many agree? How many here agree with me that, that you, as a sinner, you needed Jesus? Raise your hand. Amen. You needed Jesus. In other words, he came to your aid. He came to your rescue uh, when, you were, you know, when you were in bondage to all sorts of things. Why? Because he loves us unconditionally. Uh, I cannot explain that. All I can do is accept the fact that God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. And this is what Easter is all about or the resurrection celebration that we're doing today. In Matthew's gospel, the 28th chapter, We'll begin there, reading verse 1. Now, in the end of the Sabbath, as it, was, as it began to dawn, toward the first day of the week, came G, uh, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, <clears throat> and for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. I just love that story. I think it, can you imagine those, those uh, soldiers who were uh, guarding this, uh, this tomb? And... The Bible says his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers or the soldiers did shake and became as dead men. Or we say they were, uh, they were slain in the spirit. I'm telling you, you get close to the power of God, your body responds um, uh, to hitting the earth. Uh, because uh, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And so the Bible says... Um, and the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not for ye, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there you shall see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly. Watch this. I love this part. From the sepulcher with fear and great joy. Why? Because they believed. Amen. The women, not the men, the women believed. I said the women believed. Isn't that something? They believed the angel before they saw Jesus. And the Bible says they departed quickly and ran to bring his disciples uh, the word. And as they went to tell his disciples, Jesus met them saying, all hail. Oh my goodness, that had to have been exciting. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Isn't that something? Let's think about that. I mean, I just want you to know, you get close to God, it creates a reverence in your heart. It creates a reverential fear or such a high respect for his presence that you, you'll bow in his presence. Amen. I said, Amen. How many want the presence of God more in your life? Hallelujah. And so the Bible says, uh, Jesus said unto them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. And we know, of course, they did witness his resurrection. But the Bible says that even Jesus was grieved in his heart because they didn't believe. And then, of course, we know poor Thomas. He got the title Doubting Thomas. Uh, it's been written, I mean, uh, that's been uh, handed down for 2,000 years. Uh, Doubting Thomas. He says, I will not believe except I see the prince in his hand and shove my hand into his side. I won't believe. And of course, Jesus uh, said, blessed are those that have never seen and still believe. I said, blessed are those that have never seen and still believe. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why you're here today. You chose to believe the word of God. When you did, it changed your life. Listen, and continues to change your life. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's from one degree of glory to another. Amen. I said amen. So he is risen, just as he said. Those are the words that echoed through the earth. I mean, I can't imagine how it echoed through the spiritual atmosphere. And all hell shook in fear because something supernatural from God happened. And that the one they killed, oh, aren't you, I mean, they, 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 took, they, they took him down by the plan of God, but when he rose from the dead, hallelujah, he rose with resurrection power, hallelujah. Glory. Resurrection power, praise the Lord. That changed your life and continues to change your life to this day. Amen. 
And the, uh, regarding that event, God said of himself, he, 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 it was for, his plan was foreordained before the foundation of the world. God knew from the very, God knew when he made man that man was going to fall. So he prepared a sacrifice for him through himself. He himself, through the second person of the Godhead, paid the price for man's sin so he could restore us back to him. That's the good news of the gospel. Sinners being restored back to God so that we could live forever, forever, forever in the presence of Almighty God. Come on, give him praise today. Isn't that wonderful? That's the good news of the gospel. Thank you, Lord. So write this down if you, if you want to. What the Old Testament concealed, the New Testament revealed. What the Old Testament concealed, the New Testament revealed. What does that mean? Everything in the Old Testament uh, uh, was filled with types and shadows of God's redemptive work. See, the moment God said to the serpent, the seed of the woman is going to crush your head, Genesis 3.15, out of the Living Bible. The moment he said that, it, I mean, the moment it, it came, those words came out of his mouth, the devil was in trouble. And of course, he, he, he healed every prophet. Why? Because he thought, oh, this got to be one. This got to be the one. This got to be the one. This gotta, and it never was the one. Uh, because God had a plan. He called it a mystery. The word mystery simply means to close the mouth. God uh, gave Satan just enough uh, information to cause him to tremble in fear for the time it took those 4,000 years to get Jesus into the earth. What the Old Testament concealed, the New Testament revealed. So the Old Testament is simply filled with types and shadows of God's redemptive plan for man. That means to bring salvation to humanity so we could reunite with our creator, God himself. Now, during Israel's exodus from um, the exodus, that's the word exodus means, it means to lead out. So during Israel's, uh, they were in, held captive by uh, Egypt for 430 years. Why? Because they rebelled against God. They transgressed against God. And so therefore they found themselves reaping the calamity that God never willed for them to reap. And that is they, they spent 430 years under Egyptian slavery. Egypt is a type of the world. Pharaoh is a type of Satan. And so God led them out supernaturally through a man called Moses, who is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, a death angel was assigned to carry out judgment upon the Pharaoh for him not being willing to let God's people go. And so the execution was the, uh, would be the firstborn of all of Egypt or those that were in Egypt at the time. And at the same time, God provided something called a Passover lamb. And, that, and so in fact, it was interesting. If you read Exodus 12, you'll discover that he said, I want you to choose a lamb for every family. Every family. So every family in Israel was covered because they had the lamb. And he said, I want you to kill the lamb on the 14th day. And he said, I want you to eat the lamb. And that is so interesting, so supernatural. When they ate the lamb, uh, in, they were instantly healed from, uh, in, they were instantly healed in every aspect of their life outwardly. So in order for them to take the journey, they had to be strong and healthy. So God healed and restored divine health to every one of them. Can you go, go, give God praise for that? See, what's interesting about that is that we have a better covenant established on better promises. And if God healed them in the Old Testament, he healed us in the New Testament. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. But that's something that you have to believe in, something that you have to expect, something you have to receive by faith. If you agree, say amen. So the Passover lamb was for everyone. It was for their divine protection and provision. And uh, the night preceding their supernatural deliverance, uh, each of them killed the lamb. And then God said, I want you to take the blood from that lamb. And I want you to sprinkle the doorposts of your homes so that when the death angel passes by he, and goes by you, God says, I will pass over you and protect you from that death angel. And so, every, so, their, so their lives were marked by the shedding of blood. Amen. I said, amen. Why blood? Hebrews 9.22 says, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. The word remission means pardon, forgiveness, or freedom. And Leviticus 17 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I, that's God, have given it to you upon the altar, watch this, to make an atonement. The Old Testament, the blood of an animal, only covered the people's sins. In the New Testament, the blood of Jesus took away our sins. Can you give him praise for that? Took them away. Hallelujah. And so he says, I've given you uh, this 
uh, uh, blood upon the altar to make an atonement or a covering or an appeasement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement or a covering for the soul. And so that blood, listen, that blood identified with Israel that someone took their place. Someone took their place so that they wouldn't have to die for the sins. And of course, it came through an innocent animal, a lamb uh, uh, that God had uh, told them to, to, to kill. So as the death angel passed over uh, all throughout Egypt, whoever had the blood upon their doorposts, God would hover over them and protect them uh, from the judgment of the world that's around them. Listen, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of judgments coming forward. Listen, God, God, is not, God is not the author of death. He's not the author of calamity. He's not the author of any of that. We are the author. What we, the Bible says, whatever you sow, you'll reap. And so we're the author of whatever comes to us in the future. That's why we have to be very careful that we guard our hearts, that we speak life and not death, that we live a life that is worthy uh, to the Lord. Can I have an amen? And by doing that, see, we'll, we'll, we'll be blessed. We won't be cursed. We won't be cursed. Uh, we had a generational curse in our family called alcoholism. And uh, somebody had to break that curse. Somebody had to. And pra praise God, we broke the curse. Hallelujah. Amen. We broke the curse. Somebody has to break the curse. No, you can carry that. You can blame your mom and dad. You can blame them for all sorts of stuff, what they did or didn't do, whatever, whatever, whatever. But at, as you grow up, you are accountable for your life. And, and you can choose to be free if you want to be free. You don't have to follow the lineage of, of the curse. You can follow the blessing of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Amen. If that's what you want, God wants to give that to you. The word Passover means exemption. The word exempt means to be released or freed from an obligation or a liability to which others are subject. You know, there may be calamity going on all around this nation, but the calamity can stay out of your house if, you, if, you, if you'll keep your life right. Can I have an amen? Keep the curse out of your home. Um, Generational curses. We, uh, Pastor Vicky said this a few years ago. She goes, generational curses at some point become generational choices. You know, and, I, and today, you know, and I am a little, you know, today we have all people, uh, the, we have more addiction today than ever, I think, ever before. I mean, I think so anyway. So much, uh, it, it just keeps getting worse and worse. But I want to be addicted to God's word, and I, I want to be addicted to God's love. Can I have an amen? Yeah, I want to be addicted to the truth that makes me free. Praise the Lord. Amen. Generational curses, sickness, disease, addiction, fear, oppression, poverty, and lack, and most importantly, of course, eternal damnation. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says that for even Christ, our Passover, say my Passover. Everybody say it, my Passover. Our Passover is sacrificed for us, us who, us sinners. Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse. Now, I shared this first service because that kind of identifies some of us in our age. How many remember green stamps? Some of you are going, huh? Most of you are going, huh? Well, when we were young, Vicky even worked at the green stamp store. And, um, of course, those are the days, you know, that there was no self-adhesive. I mean, the tongue was a very blessing. Hallelujah. And, uh, and we would, did, how'd you get stamps from buying stuff? Yeah. Yeah. You buy gas or you go to the grocery store and buy a certain amount of food. Then they give you these stamps. You collect the stamps, put them in a book. And after a while you get an, enough stamps, you can go and redeem them for other stuff. You can buy some coffee cups, you can buy some plates, you can buy silverware, you know, because th those stamps were redeemable. Well, that's what Jesus did on the cross. He redeemed you. He took your place on the cross, praise God, became a curse for you so that you could live under the blessings of God instead of under the curse. Can I have an amen? Come on, give God a good shout of praise. Amen. He redeemed you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's the message of the cross. I mean, the greatest expression of God's beloved son is when he cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I thought, wouldn't this world be wonderful if that was our prayer? Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. See, God is not pleased when you speak judgment over someone. He's not. In fact, there are scriptures that bear that out. He's not pleased. He's not pleased at all that you... That you um, Speak down on a sinner. He wants you to pray for that person so God can touch their life. 
How many remember how ugly you were before you were saved? Lift your hand. Thank you. Praise God, a few of you. Anyway, yeah, so never forget that. Never forget that. I mean, yes, of course, you know, we don't live back there, but never forget the depths of God's mercy upon you, that was displayed upon your life when you called out upon God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why after 51 years, listen, 51 years I've been serving God. 51 years. And listen, I'm as full of gratitude today for God saving me as I was 51 years ago. And, and not because so much that he forgave me 51 years ago, but he forgave me yesterday morning, and he forgives me this morning, and he'll forgive me tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. His mercies are new every morning. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, they are. Thank you, Lord. 1 Timothy 1.15, which you'll put up on the screen here. This is a faithful saying. This is. What is? And, we're, oh, and worthy of all acceptation. You mean you need to accept this as the truth. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul writes this. Of whom I am chief. The reason he wrote that is because before he was Paul, he was Saul. And before Saul became Paul, Saul was an accuser of the church. He, he, he arrested uh, Christians. He beat Christians, an abuser of the church, excuse me. He beat Christians. He arrested them. He threw them in prison. He killed them. He was the one who killed Stephen. He stoned Stephen to death. And yet God's mercy reached down and touched his life. In fact, it was such a powerful transformation that the church trembled when they heard Paul got saved because they couldn't believe such a thing could happen. See, if you're working around some ugly people, your call is to pray for them. I said, your call is to pray for them and let them know that. Hey, and, you, and you pray, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to manifest the depths of mercy in their life like you did in mine. Hallelujah. That will be a powerful prayer. Can I have an Amen. Let's go on. How be it for this cause? I obtain mercy that in, the, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Watch this. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, visible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever and ever and ever and amen. Everyone say, everyone say amen. Amen. See, he came into the world to save sinners. The word save means to rescue, to deliver, to heal, and make whole. Hallelujah. Now, the whole, now all four Gospels is filled with um, stories of such great um, intervention uh, from God to humanity. But in John the 11th chapter, uh, there's the story of Lazarus. Uh, now, for some of you, Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And uh, now, they were super close to Jesus, I mean, they might have been more close to Jesus than, than, than most of the disciples. And the Bible says that Jesus loved Lazarus. And of course, the story is that Lazarus died. And Jesus was out ministering. He was gone. And it took him, uh, it, literally, he, it took him um, uh, two days uh, to get there. And um, I mean, the whole Bible is full of types and shadows of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, he, he was gone two days. There, uh, the Bible says that a day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. So uh, that just is parallel that Jesus, um, he, uh, listen, almost 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross, and he's going to come at the closing of the dispensation. And this dispensation is close to 2,000 years, so he could, con he could come any time, praise God. I said he could come any time to raise us up, praise the Lord, uh, from death unto life. And so the Bible says, Martha said to Jesus, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But I know, he, she said, that even now God will do whatever you ask. And Jesus, said, uh, and Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And of course, Martha responded, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection. I am. I am the resurrection. That word I am is the exact word used in Exodus when God said to Moses, you tell them I am sent you. 
I am that I am. I am your savior. I am your deliverer. I am your healer. I am your wisdom. I am your righteousness. I am your peace. I am your strength. I am your covering. God is I am. He is the I am. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Physically, yeah. Unless Jesus comes, you know, unless Jesus comes and returns in my lifetime, I'm going to have to step through that veil called death in order to get the fullness of God's resurrection life, and meaning, meaning my glorified body. I cannot wait, praise God, for that day. You know, it's such a beautiful story. When Jesus rose from the dead, it says in the book of Luke uh, uh, that, uh, uh, I think it's chapter 24, verse 52, and the Bible says that the graves opened and people came out of graves. Believers came up out of their graves and went about the community telling people about the resurrection. Can you believe that? I hope I can come back and just freak a bunch of you out. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, I said, this sounded beautiful. It just goes to show you how much God wants us, us to know that there is life after death. That there really is a true resurrection, praise God. And, that, and, and guess what? When they came up out of the, uh, their graves, they came up with their glorified bodies on. I mean, that must have been a tremendous a joy uh, for them to be here for a certain time. I'm sure they were probably here for the 40 days that Jesus was here. And when he ascended, they probably ascended with them. Amen? I said amen. amen. It's good news. Hallelujah. So we will. Unless Jesus returns, we will have to step through that veil, uh, uh, that veil called uh, uh, natural death. But we will live on and on and on and on. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. So Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead for one reason, to confirm that God has the power over death and the grave. God does. Amen. And um, those that receive him, those that receive Christ into their lives, the moment you die, you'll enter into eternity to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. That's the hope that we have, and let's give God praise for that. Can we do that? Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So he was raised from the dead to confirm God's power over death in all its forms, spiritual death, physical death, emotional death, relational death. Praise God. He did a total work at Calvary. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus died for the uh, nations, uh, for every person uh, in the world. And every sinner has access to the resurrection power of Christ. That's why we have to let people know. We have to let people know that God loves them. We have to let that one know that's foul mouth that God loves him and God has forgiven their sins. I mean, that is the good news of the gospel. The reason people don't come to God is because they know that they know themselves. They know what they are. They know how they live. And so therefore, how can you come to God the way you are, uh, you know, because you're just such a, you know, a low life or, you know, you have a certain way you live and, and you know, it's not pleasing to God. So you hide. Don't hide from God. Don't hide from God. Run to God and let God. God, let God minister to you. Let God set you free. Let God change your life. Can I have an amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The word resurrection means, it means a standing up again, raised to life, moral recovery of spiritual truth. Amen. I love that. Moral recovery of spiritual truth. All of a sudden, for the first time, you're seeing who God is. You understand that he's a God of love. He's a God of mercy, or you should, and a God of great compassion. Turn, if you would, to Luke 13. We'll just share one quick story, uh, and then we'll wind this down. Luke, the 13th chapter. Say, praise the Lord praise for, God's word. for God's word. Now, Luke, the 13th chapter, verse 10, it says this. And he, that's Jesus, he was teaching. When I read that, that just stood out. Why? What was he teaching? Well, he, well, he was teaching God's will. What was God's will? That people be saved and set free. He was teaching, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me, amen, to open up the eyes of the blind, to, to heal those that are bruised. I mean, he sent me to preach the good news. This is what he was teaching. Now watch this, because faith comes by hearing. He was teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And there, behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. This woman was tormented by a demon spirit. And listen, I think deliverance is going to be something huge in the days we live in, that people need to be set free from demonic strongholds. They do. 
and the and Bible says, and was bowed together and could no wise lift herself up. Now, we don't know what she had, but uh, and when it says bowed together, you know what that means? That means her back was bent so far down that her face was touching her knees, and she couldn't look up. You talk about bondage. We have no idea how it happened, but she was in bondage. And the Bible says that when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. That word loose means fully free. I said fully free. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now, of course, the ruler of the synagogue was real upset because he healed on the Sabbath day. And, uh, and, but Jesus' response to him was this, you hypocrite, verse 15, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, I just want you to know that, God doesn't, God has, he's not the author of anything that's a curse. He's not the author, you know, of anything he's, uh, uh, that is a curse. He's the author of life. John 10, 20, Jesus... John 10, 10, Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, hallelujah, and excessive, overbounding, blessed life. God wants you to have a blessed life, hallelujah. Even when you're in the midst of warfare and you're in the midst of suffering and hardship, you can look up, hallelujah, and praise God that he's your deliverer, he's your provider. Come on, everyone. Amen. He really is. He's a good God. I said he's a good God. Satan hath bound her. He says, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham? What does that even mean? That means she was Jewish, number one. That means she had a covenant with God. And again, again, in the Old Testament, when, when Israel walked with God, they never suffered in any area. They walked in wholeness. They walked in health. They walked in protection. They were, their lives were blessed, praise God. And so Jesus wanted her to know that because you have a covenant with God, because you're Jewish and you have a covenant with God, healing belongs to you. Say this out loud. Healing belongs to me. Belongs to you. Amen. If you have Christ in your life, then healing and wholeness belongs to you. Vicki was sharing a prayer uh, this morning. It was a glorious thing. And she says, you know, today we, you know, oh, you know, uh, socialized medicine, you know, or oh, my, oh, uh, all about the hospitals, about the, all the coverage we have. Man, we're covered by the blood of Jesus. We should have more faith in God than we do in the doctors. Amen. I mean, no, we go, I mean, we've been to doctors, we go to doctors, but here's my point. Grow in grace and truth, amen, so that, so that you can conquer those things that you couldn't conquer before, praise the Lord. Can I have an amen? So God gets the glory, not Dr. So-and-so. That God gets the glory. Amen. God gets the glory. Thank you, Lord. We trust too much in the human things of life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So this woman was healed and set free. Free. Amen. No longer bowed over. God doesn't want you bowed to the circumstances of life. He wants you overcoming the circumstances of life. In Galatians 3.13, I'm winding this down. It says, Christ redeemed us. I love this verse. Christ redeemed us. Everybody say that. Christ redeemed us. Say me. Christ redeemed me. He did. From what? From that self-defeating, cursed life by absorbing it completely into himself. And do you remember what the scripture says? Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. This is what happened when Jesus was nailed to the cross. He became a curse and at the same time dissolved the curse. Come on, give him praise. He became a curse to dissolve the curse from your life. You know, everybody today, and I'm very empathetic, very, very compassionate with people's sufferings. And um, uh, I was sharing with the first service that I was watching a Bill Gaither um, I know you kids don't like his music, but, uh, but Bill Gaither was very anointed, wrote some great Holy Ghost music in his lifetime. And he had a young couple on there, young meaning in their 30s. And, um, and uh, I, I, these two, they were country western, Holy Ghost um, singers. And she had a voice that was I think one of the most beautiful voices I've ever heard except for Angie. But anyway, it was... <laughs> And Amy. And Andy. <laughs> Let's keep going. What else? Amy. But she had an angelic voice. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, uh, then uh, 
they were praying. They're traveling on the road, singing, you know, and ministering to people. And, and God began to share with them that they needed to get back out in the country and live in a, uh, in a little ranch thing. So they did. They moved, made the transition. And then she got pregnant, so they stopped traveling for a year while she had the baby. And um, it's about two weeks after the baby, uh, she had some issues, so she went in to get a checkup, and they found a large mass in her body. And, uh, um, you know, she went through all the process of all the stuff you go through, chemotherapy, all that stuff. And, um, and I, I'm at the tears just rolled down my eyes listening to this precious family deal with the heartaches and the crisis of life. And, uh, and she did. She, she passed away, at, or she transitioned into heaven when she was about 35 years old. And um, uh, my heart just went out to the family for all they had to deal with. Uh, so I'm extremely empathetic and compassionate when it comes to people's sufferings. I, nobody here wants to suffer for anything. And yet, yet there are sufferings that God are required of us. The sufferings of denying your, your pride. Can I have an amen? The sufferings of rebellion. You, you got to get these things out of your life and become totally yielded to God. Uh, and um, I just, I, she's got the victory. She's in heaven. But I'm telling you, she had such an angelic voice that it would have been nice to have her hang around for another 20 years and sing for Jesus. Can I have an amen to that? So, but God, God loves you. And he is very empathetic with the challenges and the struggles you face in life. And listen to me. I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't sit and blame yourself for things. Uh, things, just, things just come because we're in this world. Uh, remember I told you when Satan attacks your life in two ways. When you're obedient to God, when you're disobedient. So either way, the warfare is real. But greater is the Holy Spirit that's in you than he is in the world. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. A lot of people have feared this past year. Uh, uh, I mean, over, over uh, balanced in their fear of this COVID. And, uh, and um, I said it a year ago, and I, and I said it over a year ago, I said, I would rather die having lived in liberty than to live in fear uh, all my life over something that could kill me. Uh, I, 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 one day I was, in, I was in Costco, and I just wanted to holler, everybody, you're all going to die someday. <laughs> because it's, it's, just part of the, it's just part of the journey. It's just part of the journey. But at, while you're here, live by faith. While you're here, get the victory. Can I have an Amen. While you're here, let the resurrection power of God work in your life. Amen. So that others will know just how good God is. Amen. I want the musicians to come forward. And we're going to, we're going to uh, take communion together. But as they're coming, I wanted to read 1 Peter 1.18, if you'll put that up on the screen. This is the Passion Translation of the Bible. It's a beautiful scripture. 1 Peter 1.18. It says this. For you know that your lives were ransomed. And I say this to everyone here today. Everyone, your life is valuable to God. Amen. I said your life is valuable to God. Now, you may not think it is, but it is. Because he paid a great ransom for you. He paid a great price, his own life. And it says, once and for all, for you know that your lives were ransomed once and for all from the empty and futile way of life handed down from generation to generation. It was not a ransom payment of silver and gold, which eventually perishes. What was it? But the precious blood of Christ, who like a spotless, unblemished lamb was sacrificed for us. Say for me. This was part of God's divine plan, for he was chosen and destined for this before the foundation of the earth was laid. He sure was. But he has, but he has been made manifest in these last days for you. Say for me. Amen. Amen. It is through him that you now believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him so, you, so that you would fasten your faith and hope in God alone. And then verse 23 says this, for through the eternal and living word of God, you've been born again, and this seed that he planted within you can never be destroyed, but will live and grow inside of you forever and ever and ever. Would you bow your head and just lift your hands right now for a moment and give him praise? I mean that. Give him praise for his love, for his mercy. Give him praise that he's your savior. Amen. Thank you, God. We worship you today. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for watching the message. I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart, and Jesus, I make you Lord of my life, 
and I thank you for saving me. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. Make sure you get into a Bible-based church like Faith Family. Open your Bible and read it daily starting with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Surround yourself with godly friends that will help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. We trust that you are encouraged, strengthened, and are ready to fight the good fight of faith. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this message so we can reach more people to fulfill our mission of strengthening families through God's word. Let us know in the comments below if you gave your life to Jesus or how this message touched your life. We would love to hear from you. God wants you to know that he is for you, not against you. We love you. We are praying for you and your family. We'll see you next time.